cup of happy, a spot of tea, questionable lighting. Hi guys, it's Casey Flowers and welcome back to another video. Today, I am going to be sharing with you how you can do Dollar Tree candle magic. Yes, that's right. Even though money certainly helps, you do not need it in order to be a magical being unicorn of light that you are. I'm gonna show you what to use. I'm gonna walk you through this process and I'm going to make you magical. So we are in my kitchen where I have a nice little work area in front of me, hello. And let's just get right into it. Also, please don't make fun of me for my oven. I guess the screw came off of it the other day and I think that my cat might've thought that it was a fun toy because I can't find it anywhere. Wait a second, one more thing. If we're going to be talking about candles, we have to talk about fire safety. I asked some of you for some fire safety advice and I got a lot of really good answers. I'm just gonna run through them really quick so so that way it's a nice little disclaimer. Have a fire extinguisher in your home. You can get them on Amazon for like 20 or $30. Do not leave your flame unattended. Extinguish them if you are leaving. Put in places that aren't prone to accidents or pets. Don't leave candles near an open window. Watch the top and the bottom of the candle, meaning set it on something like glass or stone if you can, and make sure there's nothing above it that could catch fire. Trim your wick to a quarter inch before lighting and push the edges of the candle towards the middle after burning if it's not a jar type candle. Make sure that any herbs or sprays you have are away and non-flammable. And my personal favorite from my friend Emma, don't be an idiot. Okay, now that that boring safety stuff is out of the way, let's get to the fun stuff. I went to my local Dollar Tree and like most Dollar Trees I've been in, they had a lot of candles, but the ones that I like are these ones. These long glass, unscented, colored candles, which I like to grab many of. As far as what to draw on the candle with, you have a lot of different options in the craft section. You know I like the glitter glue, but you could also use paint pens, puffy paint, or even a Sharpie. Oh, look at what my total ended up being. It is 808, an angel number. Would you look at that? So for this candle magic, you're going to need five different things, all of which you can get at the Dollar Tree. You're gonna need a pen, you're going to need paper, you're going to need a lighter, you're gonna need a candle, and you're going to need something to write on the candle with. I like glitter glue because it's glittery and it's really easy to adjust if you need to. Plus glitter feels like magical to me, I don't know. And because of that, I did get some loose glitter to add to mine, but you certainly don't need to do that. Just to be clear, I did not purchase these three things from the Dollar Tree. I instead am using my Corn Palace pen today, but they are things that you can definitely get from the Dollar Tree. Step number one is going to be to cleanse the candle. So I usually cleanse the candle by washing it with a little bit of soap and water, maybe getting it with some alcohol too, and then energy clearing it with some sage or palo santo. You really don't need that much smoke, so make sure to not overuse any sage or palo santo. Make sure to wipe it down so that that way you don't slip it, any residue gets off, and if you'd like you can take this moment to say a uh, hello to the candle or a prayer or whatever feels right for you. All cleansed. Now that we have cleansed our candle, step two is going to be to center yourself. I really like to forget this step as an Aries moon probably. I just want to go, go, go. But it's really important that before you do anything else, you center yourself. So do a little meditation, breathe in and out a few times consciously, do whatever you need to do in order to get yourself in that zone. Step three is to set your intention. Now you can use candle magic for pretty much anything that you like, but I specifically use it as it relates to releasing worries. There's something about seeing the burning candle that helps me get out of my head and to trust that the universe is going to provide me whatever I asked for it in the candle. So today I'm going to be selecting a very short intention just so that way we can keep things simple. But truly with this, the world is your oyster. Most anything that you can think of that you would like to manifest can be manifested with a candle like this. Once you set your intention, you are going to write it down. While writing your intention, you wanna keep things present or future tense. So I'm going to write, I am calm and 
collected. I'm gonna need some serious magic for that one. Step number four is to create a sigil. To do that, you're going to cross out all of the vowels in your intention. If Y is used as a vowel, cross it out. If it's used as a consonant, keep it. Then you're going to write down all of the consonants that are remaining without doubling up on any consonants. So now we have a list of consonants. We are going to make those into one symbol that combines all of them in some way. This is where you get to be artistic and creative, so just have fun with it. I suggest crossing the letters out as you go so that, that way you remember that you've used them. So there's my sigil. By the way, I would recommend not sharing your sigils with people just willy-nilly. This is just for the video. But there it is. That's what we're going to end up putting on the candle. But before we do that, I'm going to have you retrace this sigil while thinking or saying out loud your intention. Fill up the page with it, maybe do front and back, do whatever feels right. But the point is, is to get this into one kind of shape and to program that shape with your intention over and over and over again. Step five is to write this sigil onto the candle with the glitter glue or puffy paint or whatever else you're going to be using. And there we have it. It really doesn't matter if it looks like the prettiest thing in the world. What matters here is the intention. I am gonna add a little bit more glitter because I am extra. And there it is. Step number six is really easy. It's just going to be to light the candle. So make sure that your wick is trimmed. Make sure you don't grab that wet glitter glue and mess up your work. And go ahead and light the candle while again thinking of your intention. I am calm and collected. Step seven is going to be to destroy the paper. You can do this in mostly any way that you can think of. But the way that I like to do is to use the flame that I just lit with the candle and to destroy the paper. Now I will be doing that outside once the puffy paint dries, so you won't see that on camera, but trust me, the paper will be gone. And that is my video. I hope you can get some use out of this little trick. And I wanna hear all about it. So if you do use this for anything and it comes true, please come back and leave me a comment. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Please, please, please. I'm new, I need it, please. And like this video for me, it means a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye.